What is up guys, Tom again here. Um, today I'm gonna show you how to swap over an OBD1 uh, distributor to an OBD2 car. Um, and as you know, a 97 Honda Prelude is an OBD2 car, and I have an OBD2 distributor on there right now. And this one is kind of junk. Um, I have two, both of them have been burned out, so um, it was cheaper for me to trade some parts and get an OBD1 uh, distributor. And the reason I'm doing this is one, it cleans up the engine bay and gets rid of your external coil, which is right here, all this bracketry. Um, you won't have this wire anymore because the coil, this coil is now internal inside of this distributor. Now, for some people, they do that because it cleans up the engine bay. Um, another reason would be that you don't want to use the crank position sensor that's down here on the snout of the crank. Um, and one way to get around this is to go to rywire.com and to purchase this jumper harness. So this jumper harness allows you to use this OBD1 distributor um, and jump this into a OBD2 harness. Um, so as you see here, you have the harness and you have a 20 amp, or 25 amp rather fuse. And I'm gonna show you where all of these go. But basically this allows for the conversion. This long piece basically goes back to the crank position sensor uh, plug that's for the harness because we're getting rid of that, but we still need to send <clears throat> the stock harness a signal so that the ECU, ECU knows where the crank is. And part of, as you see, it goes back to this main plug, which plugs up right here to the distributor because OBD1 distributors have a crank position sensor inside of them. So that's why you have to run that whole setup. Um, for people who have an OBD2 setup and ECU, you will not have to retime your car if it is a 97 Honda Prelude or an OBD2 Prelude because the ECU automatically sets timing. On an OBD1 car or using an OBD1 ECU, you will have to time it after you put the new distributor on. And I specifically have to do that because I have Honda, I have a turbo setup, and it's extremely critical you set timing perfectly. So we're gonna get into this. But essentially what we're gonna be doing is you have to disconnect these two plugs here and disconnect the distributor. Um, back here, there's a plug for your coil and you have to disconnect this plug as well. And I'll see if I can get this done on camera here. So I got that plug off and as you can see, this plug has very thick gauge wires. It has the green wire, it has a black wire with a yellow stripe and then that large, what looks to be a yellow wire there. You take this fuse and you shove it into the top of this uh, jumper harness here because you need to run power from this side to that side now. Um, so now that this is all jumped in there, I'm gonna wrap this up with electrical tape and move on to the rest of the install. So take off this plug so we're not gonna need this coil. And um, this at this point you can start transferring over your spark plug wire assembly if you don't have to redo the firing order, but you can transfer all of these over to your new distributor um, because it'll be in close proximity here. But I'm gonna start taking these plugs off just like so. And now I gotta take the distributor off. All right guys, so once you get the old distributor swapped over, um, or swapped out rather, and the new distributor swapped in, um, then you can start connecting your rye wire uh, harness assembly. Here is this plug that goes in from the distributor into the stock harness. This is the plug that goes from the rye wire to the distributor. And then this is the rye wire to your stock harness. Um, and back here also, like I said, take that plug that comes off of your coil. I took the whole coil assemble, assembly off. Now it looks really nice and clean. Um, you put that 20 amp fuse in there and then uh, electrical tape it up and then zip tie it away. Um, but down here, you're gonna have a harness, which is probably gonna be difficult to see. And of course, I'm not prepared to uh, look for it with a flashlight. But down in here, you're gonna find your crank position sensor jumper or your plug. And I found it here. It's hard to see on camera probably for you guys, but you take the harness off of the sensor. Uh, can I pull it off? Try to pull it off when you're, uh, get the camera one hit. Ooh, I heard it snap open. So that's promising. There it goes. So your stock harness down in here. See that coming around here? This plug is your crank position return signal for your ECU. So this long wire that you get from Rywire, this plug, literally goes right into there. That's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, I still have some data logs to do. So I'm gonna finish up my job here, clean it all up, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Sorry it's a long video, but um, there's a lot of details here. So have fun, I'm out.